Okay, we're going to get started here. I'm going to do this a little different this week for week three. I am going to pre record this lecture into two sections. And then I'm going to upload this to announcements and also send you an email to the links so that you guys can get started as soon as possible this Monday on your newsletter and your discussions. And then tomorrow, I will have open office hours, same time, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that would be for you guys to come in if you had any questions after reviewing the two lectures that I posted. If you have not reviewed and listened to the lectures, I will definitely let you know tomorrow if you're joining us to do so before coming in for the open office hour. And that'll just allow me to have enough time to go over any questions. Since we went over the hour last week, <clears throat> I wanna try something a little different this week so that you guys can get started a little quicker, especially because this is gonna be a little bit more involved. And then on Tuesday, we'll just open it up for any questions during the open office hours. All right, so welcome to week three. We are going to be getting into uh, the above mentioned here, the, the overview for week three. And again, office hours are tomorrow. So feel free to come in if you want to, it's not mandatory if you have any questions. And this would be after you listen to today's recordings. We're gonna be talking about going over your discussion, and that's gonna include what benefits do grids add to a layout? And the reason why we're discussing this is because we're going to be putting this into action uh, whenever you get into your <clears throat> next project, which will be your assignment, uh, part one this week, newsletter design. So we're gonna be designing a newsletter. It's gonna be a cumulative project, meaning you're gonna build upon this from this week to next week. This is part one, next week will be part two. So you really wanna make sure that you complete this first part this week and submit it by Sunday so that you're not creating more work for yourself. Um, the next part two, if you wait, it's gonna be a lot of work. So <laughs> make sure that you're allowing yourself enough time so that you can do the second part. Um, also <clears throat> this week, is your first quiz. It's going to go over basically your layout uh, vocabulary. We'll, we'll point out where that's at. So make sure that you're studying those vocabulary words before you take that quiz. I know two of you who took the quiz during week one. So <laughs> make sure you take it during the week that it's due so that you have adequate time to study and, you know, getting the most possible points and learning, you know, what these terms mean. So that's the whole point of being here, right? All right. So, and then we're going to go over the end of our second lecture, two-part lecture today. We're going to go over how to package your InDesign file, I'll explain to you what that means, and submit a zip file. So welcome to week three. Let's take a look at your discussion. And basically what we're going to be discussing this week is what benefits do grids add to a layout? <clears throat> so think about that. So let's take a look at this. This might help you kind of get started as you, you know, begin your uh, discussion this week. Don't be afraid to offer different perspectives when you're responding to your two peer posts. You can I obviously want to see you guys adding in some factual information. So referencing um, factual information is, is super important so that everyone can learn from each other, see different perspectives, think about, you know, what's facts and, you know, kind of add your own two cents in your own words as you go through. So let's take a look, <clears throat> excuse me, at the benefits of using a grid. So designers solve problems, right? We're problem solvers. Uh, web designers and graphic designers are faced with finding solutions to visual and organizational problems. 
And one approach is solving these problems is the grid. It's not only the it's not the only approach you might take, but it's one with several important benefits. So here's a list of four benefits that you can get by using a grid. It can create clarity and order to your composition. So grids bring order to a layout, making it easier for visitors to find and navigate through information. And that's basically what we want to do as designers. We wanna make sure that we're leading the eye in, in, in <clears throat> a hierarchical order that's appropriate to what's important first, second, and third. We, we um, kind of exercised that last week with your ad creation with the vegetable and fruit ad. Um, efficiency, that's another benefit. So grids allow designers to quickly add elements to a layout because many layout decisions are addressed while building the grid structure. And that's that's important part because time is money. So the more efficient you are as a designer, the better off you'll be, the more successful you'll be because you won't be, you know, billing those hours uh, to the client, especially if you're in an ad agency um, <clears throat> and not taking as long so that you can get on to the next project that's that's uh, needs to be worked on. And of course, you don't want to waste a lot of your time because time is time is money for you, too, as a designer. Another benefit for using a grid is economy. So grids make it easier for other designers to work and collaborate on the design as they provide a plan for where to place elements. So it's almost like um, like a map of sorts. So it's like a win-win situation. It's like if it's done correctly, you really can't lose with a grid. Consistency and harmony is the fourth point of benefits of using a grid. So grids lead to consistency in the layout of pages across a single site or even several sites or even a composition, not just a website, creating a structural harmony in the design. Now we're referencing web design or web websites because that often uses a lot of information and, and not just body copy, but also imagery. So a grid is super important so that we can organize that information just like it would be for a magazine layout and even a newsletter. So those are four of the ones that I wanted to bring to your attention. And that's something that you can use in your discussion as you're, you're talking about that. You may even wanna bring your own experience in regards to how you have used grids if you have in <clears throat> past projects and how they helped you as well. Here's some just examples of visual grids here that people are using. Obviously these pink lines are just showing you the grid. It's not actually printed to make it aesthetically pleasing, but also uh, make it easier to follow. And these are different grid structures based on a page size, a very symmetrical pa page size um, and different ways to plan a grid out. So, you know, this would be an example of how you could start your grid sketches, you know, and this would be called wireframes if you're doing a website sketch. Um, but you can also do this for print design as well. So there's all kinds of different grid systems, but know that it is used to really organize your information, make it easier to read, easier to follow. As a designer, we want to solve that problem. So you're given all this information by your client. They give you a ton of photos, a ton of copy, and you have to organize that information. Here you're seeing different, different um, <clears throat> grids at the bottom and how that's solved at the top with the actual information and the copy and imagery used in each of these examples. So it's kind of neat to see how that comes into play. So as you get started with your discussion, don't forget to add, you know, your res resources, your references, APA format, please. And, um, you know, challenge each other uh, respectively, you know, bring up different ideas and perspectives when you're responding to your classmates. Make sure that you're not just saying, hey, I like your thoughts. Uh, you did a great job. You know, add some more 
thinking, your critical thinking skills is what I'm looking for in your post. So uh, bringing in real world examples of your experiences is also great to see. All right. So with that being said, let me go ahead and open up. Let me stop sharing here. I'm going to open up the classroom so you can see kind of how this week looks. So you're just going to go to week three. Give me one second here. Week three, there we go. I'm going to share my screen. So uh, what you'll see here, and let me actually view this as a student so you can see how it looks on your end. There we go. So basically, this is where you'll come in tomorrow if you have any questions after listening to these two lectures. This is kind of what we just went over. We will be going over a little bit more in detail. This is when you start your discussion. Go ahead and click on this uh, to the discussion. Um, other than that, you will have a quiz down here. So I'm going to kind of skip the assignment right now because the second part of this um, lecture will be about the assignment. But the quiz is a multiple choice quiz. And just make sure that you are um, studying the material from week one and two. In particular, if you go to week two, the vocabulary list, let's see here, it's up here, is right here. So go ahead and click on that and just review the vocab. There's a lot of information in here. So hopefully you got to read through this the last two weeks and really got a good grasp of what all of these mean, the terminology. Not only will we, we be referencing this during the class and the demonstrations, but also this will be what is covered in your quiz. So definitely go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so I'm gonna um, wrap this up and start the second lecture, which will cover your assignment.